Good morning and welcome again. This is lecture number 32. Previously, we discussed a few aspects on implementation and coding for B spline curves. We continue with that and today we talk about parameterization and not vector generation. Let me now continue with the MATLAB code. If you recall, last time I had mentioned that we would want to introduce a function that would help us generate a not vector using different parameterization schemes. What I have done is I have written this function and today I will run you through different pieces of the code. The function is not underscore vector underscore generation and it requires a few parameters. I will talk about them in a while. This variable E e is the exponent that is used in various parameterization schemes. For example, if I put E e as 0, I get uniform parameterization. If I put E e as 1, I get chord length parameterization and for E e as half, I get centripetal parameterization. You can choose your own value for this exponent. For now, let me work with the chord length parameterization. The exponent value I choose is 1. With regard to the parameters that we would like to pass through this function, the first one pertains to the number of knots that we require. This one relates to the exponent used for different parameterization schemes. Small p is the order of B spline basis functions and the curve. Capital P is a set of data points that we would need in this function because we need to compute the chord lengths of a polyline. And these are two flags that relate to whether we desire to clamp the B spline curve at the first point and or at the last point. Let us now see in detail how this function looks like. As I said, m relates to the number of knots. In fact, m is equal to the number of knots minus 1. E e is the exponent used small p is the order of the baseline basis function on the curve. Capital P is the array containing data points and f k and l k are two flags pertaining to whether we desire to clamp the baseline curve at the first point or at the last point. I should introduce l k here. Let us first work towards the generation of n plus 1 parameter values. We set the first parameter value as 0 and we run a for loop next. For i going from 1 to the number of design points minus 1, u of i plus 1 equals u of i plus norm of 2 consecutive data points i plus 1 and i f data point. And this length is raised to the exponent, the value of which that we have specified before. This is straightforward. What we do is we now compute the overall length of the polyline by adding these lengths and we normalize the parameter values as u equals u over maximum 
value of u. Now we have to consider three cases. The first case is of the simple knots. If we assume simple knots, let me store the knot values in an array identified by capital T. This command here lets us initialize all the knot values to 0. Through this statement, we specify the last n plus 1 knots as the respective parameter values that we have obtained here. Now, we have the first p knots as free choices. To get them, what we do is we start subtracting negative 1 from t i plus 1 here, where index i starts from p and it is decremented by minus 1 every time until its value becomes 1. So, in effect, what we are doing is we are taking the first parameter value as a reference knot and we are decrementing 1 each time to get a knot on the left. Now, this is for simple knots. Case 2 is the case where we have to clamp our B spline curve at the first data point. We will be using an if condition. If f k equals 1, and L k is not equal to 1. That is when we need to clamp the curve at the first knot. You would know what we need to do. That is right. We need to repeat the first p knots. To do so, we set the last n plus 1 knots as our parameter values and we ensure that the first p knots get repeated through this piece of code. For the index i going from p minus 1 decremented by 1, its final value is 1, t of i is equal to t of i plus 1. We can do something very similar if we need to clamp our B spline curve at the last knot. Again, we are going to be using the if statement with a different argument. This is the case when f k is not equal to 1 and l k is equal to 1. If you observe, this statement here. Here, what we do is we use the n plus 1 parameter values as the first n plus 1 knots. Observe this statement carefully. The subsequent knot is equal to the last parameter value plus 1. This is also equal to the last of the previous knots. And then through this for loop here, for index i going from 2 to p, where p is the order of the curve, all the subsequent knots get repeated. In fact, they have the same value as this. Let us go back a little bit and carefully look at the statement. Here, what we did was that we initialized the last n plus 1 knots as our parameter values and then a knot previous to this array, which is T p was 
computed as the next knot minus 1. Once we had the value of t of p, we simply repeated that knot through this for loop. We now come to the case where we need to clamp our B spline curve both at the first and the last data points. We use the if loop for this. If the two flags have the value 1 each, then of course, we need to repeat the first p knots. We set the values of these knots as 0. We also need to repeat the last p knots. We set the value of these knots as 1. And the number of knots that remain are the number of data points plus p minus 2 p, which is the number of data points minus p knots, where p is the order of our B-spline basis function. To compute the remaining interior knots, as we have discussed before, we average p minus 1 parameter values at a time. So, we use a nested for loop for this. The index i goes from 1 to the number of data points minus the order of the curve. There is a variable here, s u m p, which we set to 0. For another index j, going from 1 to p minus 1, sump is equal to sump plus u of i plus j. Index j is coming from here and index i is coming from here. With index i as a reference, we compute the sum of the next p minus 1 parameters. Once we have that, we compute the knot value t of p plus i, which is equal to this sum here over p minus 1. Finally, we return the knot vector back to the main function. We may also think of returning the parameter values, which we may or may not use in the main function. It may have been a little boring for you to have to go through the code with me, but I assure you, once you start coding yourself, you will enjoy a great deal. Let us take a look now at a few examples. Let us go back to our main function. A little common before I show you the examples that once we have the knot vector, we can determine the interval of full support, which is given by a and b. Variable a is given by the pth knot in the knot vector, and variable b is given by m plus 1 minus p minus 1 knot in the vector. We execute this code now for different values of exponents. We are not interested in clamping our B spline curve at this time, so we set the flags to 0. Let us also consider uniform parameterization in knot vector generation. Now, this is how a curve which is free 
from both ends looks like. Let me change the properties of this to set the background as white and also to raise the font size of these numbers here. The dashed black line show the control power line and the dashed red line shows the B spline curve. Let us experiment further. Now, we set the exponent value as 1, which will allow us to work with the chord length parameterization and we execute the code again. We change the properties a little bit. We are now going to be plotting this B spline curve using solid red line. You would appreciate this change. This was the initial curve and this is our new curve now. The shape of the curve is expected to change if we use different parameterization schemes. How about using the centripetal parameterization? Here, we set the value to 0 0.5. Let us retain these flag values as 0 each. And let us plot the curve using a different color, let us say blue. You would appreciate that the curves do change in shape. It is just that it is not clear to us how the shape change will occur if we switch between different schemes for not vector generation. Let us maintain a single parameterization scheme. Let us say we work with the cot length parameterization. Now, this is a curve which is free from both ends. And on this figure, let me superpose two other cases. Where we now try to clamp our curve at the first point and at the last point. To clamp our curve at the first point, let us change this back to 1. And let us change the color of the curve as well to so, let us say blue and execute this code. Okay. We observe what we desire. Let me now change this color to green, go back and change these flags to 0 and 1 respectively. What I want now is to have my B spline curve pass to the last point. This is how the curve looks like. It is clamped at this last data point. Finally, let us clamp our curve at both the endpoints. We choose a different color to plot this curve. This one is the final curve right here that passes through the first as well as the last point. Let us now continue with our lecture number 32 
and discuss a few more very important aspects of B spline segments and curves. The first one relates to the interpolation and the second one pertains to nerves, non-uniform rational B splines. Let us see how we can interpolate different data points with B spline curves. Given n plus 1 data points p sub 0, p sub 1 up till p sub n, we require to design a B spline curve that fits these data points. And let us say we choose the order of a B spline curve p, which is smaller than or equal to the number of data points minus 1. So, n here is equal to the number of data points minus 1. We can generate a set of parameter values u sub 0, u sub 1 up till u sub n through any scheme that we had discussed previously. And accordingly, the number of knots can be computed. The length of the knot vector is m plus 1, which is given by the order plus the number of data points, n plus 1. You know that already. Clearly, we will have a knot vector t 0, t 1 up till t m in our hands to work with. With that, the basis functions will be known to us. What is next? If you look at this problem, it is an inverse problem. Why do I say that? Simply because we are not directly specifying the control polyline to design our B spline curve. Rather, we are specifying a set of points through which our B spline curve would pass and for that, we need to compute our control polyline, which is why it is an inverse problem. Let us investigate this further. we are required to find the interpolating B spline curve. As you would know, this curve is given by summation index i going from 0 to n, n sub p, p plus i of t times b i. p is the order of the curve and i is the last knot for which n p, p plus i stands. B sub i is usually the design point that a user would specify. In this case, B sub i is an unknown. So, we have n plus 1 B sub i's which are unknowns and we need to find them. Now, let us consider that we know the information at different points on the B spline curve. In other words, we know the points through which we need to interpolate the B spline curve. These points are given by P sub k and these points are known at different parameter values u sub k you plug in this parameter value here to get summation i going from 0 to n, n p p plus i of u k times b i. We know that we have or rather we are working with n plus 1 unknowns. 
we would need to generate n plus 1 conditions. These conditions will relate to different k values going from 0 to n. We can collate these conditions in the matrix form. Let us say capital P is equal to P sub 0, P sub 1, P sub 2 up till P sub n. These are the data points available to us and that is equal to an n plus 1 by n plus 1 matrix. The first row of that is n p p of u 0, n p p plus 1 of u 0, n p p plus 2 of u 0. The last entry in this row is n p n plus p of u 0. The second row is the same as the first row except that we are using u 1 instead of u 0. And this similar is the case for the third row. The basis functions are the same, but evaluated at u 2. Likewise, for the last row here, we will have all these basis functions evaluated at u sub n. And here, we will have a vector corresponding to these design points v sub i, v sub 0, v sub 1 up till v sub n. We will have to be extra careful in choosing the parameter values here. We need to ensure that to determine these design points, inversion of this n plus 1 by n plus 1 matrix does not cause any problem. In other words, we want this n plus 1 by n plus 1 matrix to be non singular. The right hand side in chart is represented by this matrix n, which is this one, times the matrix B, which is this. Let us take a look at a few examples. What I have done here is I have introduced a new piece of code to interactively specify the data points. Let us not get into that and straight away work on the example. We are working with order 4 v span curves. Let me magnify this figure. And say specify 6 data points through which I would require my v span curve to pass. Now, the curve in blue is our v spline curve. It is a curve in full support and the polyline in red is what is determined. The points and stars are the control points that we have just determined for this b spline curve. Let us consider a few more examples. The curve in blue passes through the points that we just specified. The stars are the control points that are determined 
and the polyline in red joins these control points. Let us see if we can interpolate a B spline curve through a large set of data points. arbitrarily specifying these points. Here I have specified 4, 7, 10, 12, 15 and this is the last point 16. It looks like I can get my B spline curve to pass through a set of data points, any number that I specify. Accordingly, my control points get recomputed every time and the control polyline changes every time as well. We now get to a very important concept in B spline curves NURBS. It is an abbreviation for non uniform rational B splines. Recall that we had discussed rational Bezier curves quite some time ago. A rational Bezier curve is given by B of t equals something in the numerator and something in the denominator. Our numerator is summation the index i going from 0 to n, Bernstein polynomial with index i and degree n, which is a function of parameter t times the weight w i, which is assigned by the user corresponding to the design point phi i. In the denominator, we let go of p i in the summation. So, we have summation i going from 0 to n, the nth degree Bernstein polynomial with index i function of t times the weight w i. And we had also seen that we could model different quadric functions precisely using rational busy models just that we did not have much local control to be offered by Bernstein basis functions. Splines can be generalized along very similar lines. All we have to do is replace Bernstein polynomials with the corresponding B spline basis functions of order p. The design information from the control points and from the respective weights remain the same. If you look at these two expressions carefully, this one here offers a great deal of freedom and choice both freedom in terms of additionally specifying the order of the spline curve and in terms of local control offered by the B spline basis functions n p p plus i of t. As I mentioned before, the weights w i can help a user to gain additional design freedom. Let us try to understand each term in this expression non uniform rational B spines. Non uniform because we can have the not vector to be 
non-uniform, implying that the knots may not be uniformly placed. In other words, the knot spans may not be of equal length. Why rational? Because of this expression here. You are working with fractions and that is why rational. You would have guessed why B splines, because we are working with B spline basis functions. Although this is a field in itself, I will only highlight some salient features of nerves in this lecture. If I set the weight corresponding to the ith control point equal to 0. It is natural for us to expect that the location of B i, the corresponding design point, will not affect the shape of the curve. For larger values of the weight w i, we would expect just in the case with rational Bezier curves that our B-spline curve will get pushed towards the corresponding design point B i. This model of course offers great flexibility in design. Because we use B spline basis functions. NURBS possess local shape control and inherit all properties of B spline basis functions and therefore B spline curves. They are widely used in freeform curve design and can also be used to model analytic curves. Let us consider some examples. I have modified the code that I have been developing a little bit. This array P that had the x coordinates in the first column and the y coordinates in the second column now has the weights associated in the third column. At this time, all the weights are initialized to 1. As you would expect, with all weights as 1, we will be getting our B spline curve. Over here, I have modified the definition of a B spline curve to include the weight information. So, here I multiply the respective design points with the weights and I compute the denominator sum underscore d before. This is how I compute the denominator. Sum underscore d equals sum underscore d plus the B spline basis function of order p, the last knot as p plus k, the knot vector t that we now know how to generate using different parameterization schemes and the parameter value. And p k comma 3 corresponds to the weight of the kth design point. Let us plot the first curve with the red solid line. These are the design points we have. P 
you are working with cord length parameterization and you would like to clamp RB spline curve at both the first and the last control points. Let us see how the curve looks like. Let me change the properties of this figure. So, that it becomes much clearer. Okay, so, this is our original red curve. Now, let us experiment with this point here as a reference. First, second, third, fourth, fifth point here. Let us go back to the code and change the weight corresponding to this point. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Let us first set the weight to 0 and see what happens. Let us use a different color to plot this curve. It looks like the new curve here in blue is not affected by the position of this point at all. For w equals 0, this is our new curve. For the corresponding weight equals 1, the curve gets slightly pushed towards this point. Let us try to see if this happens. We plot the next curve using the green color and we change the weight of this point to let us say 5. Indeed, if I increase the weight at this point, the curve gets locally attracted towards it. Let us arbitrarily make the weight as 100. It is a very high weight, but what is the harm in the experiment? Let us use the yellow color with thicker line width to plot this new curve. It seems that the resulting curve almost passes to this point. Let us magnify this region here. As I said, it almost passes to this point. It does not actually pass to this point. What I have shown now is how to change the shape of the curve corresponding to the weight of a single point. Once you are ready with your own code, you can experiment how you can play with the shape of these V spline curves. Now, NURBS, by changing the positions and the weights corresponding to each point. There is still a lot that if you want, you can learn in this area. For now, let us stop our discussion on nerves here. Before I leave you, I like to mention a few words about B spline basis functions and Bernstein polynomials. It looks like you can convert B spline basis functions to Bernstein polynomials for specific cases. For an order P curve or a B spline basis function, if 
you repeat the first knot with value 0 three times. And if you do the same, that is if you repeat the last knot with the value 1 three times. And if you consider p b span basis functions, which is the same as the control points, it so happen that the number of knots given by m plus 1 will be such that m will be given by n plus p, n is p from here. So, it is p plus p, which is 2 p. And in this case, the B spline basis functions will degenerate to Bernstein polynomials. Let us take a quick look at one of the examples. Let us see how order 4 B spline basis functions degenerate to degree 3 Bernstein polynomials. So, for that we would need 4 B span basis functions and the total number of knots will be 4 plus 4. Of these let us say the first 4 knots have the value 0 and the second set of 4 knots has the value 1. let us plot the corresponding B spline basis functions. As you would note, they are precisely the respective Bernstein polynomials B sub 0 super 3, B sub 1 super 3, B sub 2 super 3 and b 3 super 3. You might want to work it out mathematically as to how this happens. 